U.S. taxpayers are the biggest funder of the World Health Organization. But it's rife with corruption, and it's done some sketchy things when it comes to China's coronavirus outbreak. This is China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. When the world is threatened by an outbreak of a deadly coronavirus from China, who are you going to call? No. Who? The World Health Organization. I can see how that could be confusing. Let's just stick with WHO. And I can see how the WHO's response to the coronavirus could also be confusing, because it's hard to understand how the main global organization charged with handling it could have screwed up so badly. The World Health Organization is a United Nations body concerned with world health, at least supposedly. But it turns out corruption in the agency is putting lives at risk. By now, it's a recognized fact that the Chinese Communist Party has used a two-step solution to deal with the coronavirus. Step one, cover it up. They arrested whistleblowing doctors and journalists. And state-run media either kept numbers of infections impossibly low or didn't report on it at all. But after weeks of cover-up allowed the virus to spread across China and around the world, it became too big to cover up. So then, step two, authoritarian crackdown. The Chinese regime has quarantined much of Hubei province where the outbreak began. It is the largest quarantine in human history, with tens of millions of people affected. And now, much of the rest of the country is under lockdown as well. Now, you might be thinking a quarantine makes sense, right? Except on this ginormous scale, it doesn't actually work well. It's been authoritarian, heavy-handed, and often arbitrary, varying from one village or city to another. And this has made Chinese people lose trust in their government. Some people look for ways to escape the quarantine zones. And many don't report to authorities when they get sick because the consequences could include being put in a quarantine center next to hundreds of other sick people. In some cases, people have said that the quarantine centers don't have enough medical staff or even food. According to an expert at the University of Edinburgh, the way Chinese authorities have gone about it is quite dangerous because you actually start to erode that trust in the government. You want citizens coming forward and saying, I feel unwell. The Chinese Communist Party is getting slammed with international criticism for how they handled the coronavirus. But guess who hasn't been criticizing them? The World Health Organization. In fact, the WHO has been praising how the Communist Party has handled it. This is the Director General of the WHO, Tedros Adhanom, meeting with Chinese leader Xi Jinping three weeks ago. At the time, Tedros said, we appreciate the seriousness with which China is taking this outbreak, especially the commitment from top leadership and the transparency they have demonstrated. He also said, China is actually setting a new standard for outbreak response. Hmm. Detaining activists who criticize Xi Jinping? Technically, that is a new standard for outbreak response. Anyway, Tedros lavished praise on China, despite the fact that it took nearly two weeks for the agency to get a go-ahead from China to send even an advance team, which arrived in Beijing on February 10th, to discuss a joint mission. Tedros's praise of China has been so lavish, he's been featured repeatedly in Chinese state-run media, like this video from the People's Daily. China took action massively at the epicenter, at the source of the outbreak. This is heroic. The actions of China is making us safer. Maybe it's just me, but I don't feel a whole lot safer. And keep in mind, Tedros was praising China's authoritarian response to the virus. At the same time, he was criticizing other countries, especially the U.S., for travel bans to and from China. There is no reason for measures that unnecessarily interfere with international travel and trade. We call on all countries to implement decisions that are evidence-based and consistent. Good thing no one listened to him. 
major world airports set up screening procedures for travelers who had recently been to China. Many airlines simply stopped flights to and from China. You know, it's not a great thing when people ignore the main global organization that's meant to advise everyone on health crises. Tedros also said in an interview that the quarantine of tens of millions of Chinese people is consistent with the WHO's regulations that call for the least intrusive measures possible and strong protection for freedom of movement and other human rights. Least intrusive? I would hate to see what the WHO actually considers intrusive. Incidentally, Tedros was a leader in Ethiopia's Tigray People's Liberation Front. That's a wing of the ruling Marxist-rooted Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front. He served the violently repressive regime as Minister of Foreign Affairs from 2012 to 2016 after a stint as health minister. So I would really hate to see what Tedros considers intrusive. Though he did say, I think that human rights and so on should be respected. Yeah, human rights and so on, yada yada yada. But Tedros isn't the only one in the WHO who's praising the Chinese Communist Party's response to the coronavirus. Another WHO representative recently told a panel, the people of China feel protected. We all need to take a step back and admire what's happened. Remember Peter Humphrey, the British private investigator who was jailed in China in 2013? He had been drugged, chained to a chair, locked in a cage, and then made to read out a statement written by the police in front of the cameras. The anchor who presented the footage, James Chow, is now a goodwill ambassador with the World Health Organization. This kind of praise for China has been going on for years. This statement from former WHO Director General Margaret Chan says, in the eyes of the world, China is increasingly seen as a model for development at many levels. China has lifted millions of its people out of poverty. And China is extremely fortunate to have a president who has made health the center of all government policies. And if the people don't want to be healthy, sometimes you just gotta force them. Incidentally, Beijing backed the appointment of Margaret Chan, a former director of health in Hong Kong, as WHO Director General from 2006 to 2017. But beyond just praise, the Chinese regime seems incredibly successful at getting the WHO to bow down to its claims over Taiwan. In case you don't know, Taiwan is a sovereign country with its own government, military, and currency. But the Chinese regime considers it part of China. And China has used its influence in the WHO to keep Taiwan out. Here's a speech given at a WHO meeting last year. There is simply no principal basis why Taiwan should not be here. The only reason why it is not here now is because of the fact that the government in Beijing does not like the current administration in Taipei. And yet, Taiwan is not allowed to join the World Health Organization as a member state, or even as an observer. And that puts Taiwan's population of 23 million people at risk. Taiwan's exclusion from the WHO leaves its population vulnerable during this crisis. A lack of direct and timely channels to the WHO have already resulted in inaccurate reporting of cases in Taiwan. Taiwan has repeatedly complained that China and the WHO aren't sharing information about the coronavirus outbreak with them. That's also what happened back in 2003 when the deadly SARS epidemic broke out in China. Besides putting 23 million Taiwanese lives at risk, that also affects the 50 million foreign travelers who pass through Taiwan's airports every year. They might assume the WHO is taking care of things. They would be wrong. In fact, the WHO can't even figure out what to call Taiwan. Last month, a WHO spokesman called it China Taiwan. And then a February 4th report flipped it and listed Taiwan, China, but got the number of cases wrong, relying on data from Beijing, not Taipei. Now, the WHO doesn't even mention Taiwan. They recently called it Taipei and Environs in a list of affected cities 
in China. Why does China have this kind of influence over the World Health Organization? It turns out the WHO is horribly corrupt. An audit revealed there has been a surge in internal corruption allegations across the whole of the organization, with the detection of multiple schemes aimed at defrauding large sums of money from the international body. That included an upsurge of internal complaints of corruption, fraud, and even sexual harassment from across the 7,000-strong organization, overwhelming an internal team of four full-time investigators and two consultants. And yet, the division of the WHO responsible for handling the coronavirus outbreak is so chronically underfunded, it has repeatedly been found to pose a severe and unacceptable level of hazard. Great! So some people in the WHO are scamming loads of money and getting rich, while the coronavirus team is way underfunded. Maybe that's why the WHO delayed issuing a global emergency over the coronavirus, even though human-to-human -human transmission had already been confirmed. Or maybe it's because of China's role as a donor to the WHO. After this 2017 meeting between Tedros and high-level Chinese leaders, the WHO got a big new financial contribution from China. China also wants to build an $80 million headquarters for the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Guess where they want to build it? In Ethiopia. <laughs> wow. What a coincidence that that's Tedros' own country. The U.S. is pretty sure it'll be used for spying. But China's importance to the WHO derives not so much as a current donor, but as a future source of funds and a partner with which to tackle the biggest global health problems. Well, China's got the money and 20% of the world's population. But is the ruling Communist Party really a good partner with which to tackle the biggest global health problems? A lot of health experts are furious at the WHO for their praise of China's response to the coronavirus and their delay in issuing a global emergency. According to Lawrence Gostin, a professor of global health law at Georgetown University who also provides technical assistance to the WHO, we were deceived. Myself and other public health experts, based on what the World Health Organization and China were saying, reassured the public that this was not serious that we could bring this under control. Allegations of corruption in the WHO are nothing new. In 2017, this expose from the Associated Press found that nearly half of the WHO's $2 billion budget went to first-class airfare and five-star hotels. The United States is the largest contributor. U.S. taxpayers fund about a quarter of the WHO's budget. And get this. That doesn't include costs covered by host countries seeking to curry favor, which are off WHO's books. And if you know anything about the Chinese Communist Party and how they buy influence, it's often by spending on lavish trips. Now, there's no evidence that's what happened with the WHO. I'm just a bit concerned, you know, what with all the corruption and bootlicking especially because the WHO relies on the funding and the cooperation of members to function, giving wealthy member states like China considerable influence. So I know right now you're probably pretty worried about getting accurate information about the coronavirus outbreak. Fear not. The WHO is also battling misinformation, working with Google to ensure that people get facts from the UN Health Agency first when they search for information about the virus. And that's why, below this video on YouTube, a platform owned by Google, you'll see a link to the WHO, the most trustworthy source of coronavirus information. They put it there automatically. I can't remove it. Of course, if that's not enough to point your opinion in the correct direction, YouTube has also demonetized almost every video I and everyone else on YouTube has published about the coronavirus. You know, to discourage us all from even talking about it outside the official channels. But what Google, YouTube, the WHO, and China didn't count on was the amazing support of what I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. 
They're fans of the show who contribute on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Because of their financial support, I can make an episode about how China, the WHO, and Google don't have your best interests at heart when it comes to the coronavirus outbreak. They can demonetize China Uncensored all they want. And I'll just keep making episodes anyway. So as a thank you to members of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, I answer questions from them at the end of some of my episodes. Today's question comes from Tony Chapkowski. He asks, Ted Rose? Ted Rose? Really on the ball? China has huge investments in Ethiopia, where he hails from, and their airline is still flying to China. It makes Kenya next door very afraid. You know, I never even thought about that, but it turns out that yes, China is investing heavily in Ethiopia. And since Chinese investment is called debt trap diplomacy, it should come as no surprise that about half of all Ethiopia's debt belongs to China. The largest part of the debt was for the construction of the $4 billion Ethiopia Djibouti Railway. The Export-Import Bank of China backed the project with $3.3 billion in loans. The railway has so far been crippled by light loads, electricity shortages, and disruptions due to protests. But hey, it connects Ethiopia to China's first overseas military base in Djibouti. So that's worth it, right? Chinese investment in Africa has been called a new colonialism. Could Chinese investment in Ethiopia affect Tedros's decision-making as director-in-chief of the WHO? Obviously, I can't say for sure. But let's just say I feel extra comforted by the WHO link YouTube is putting below this video. Take it away, Tedros. The actions of China is making us safer. Thanks for your question, Tony. And thank you for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to China Uncensored. I've been hearing from a lot of subscribers. YouTube has unsubscribed them. So yeah, make sure you're subscribed. Turn that notification bell on so you get notified when we have new episodes. And please, help share these videos. I'm sure the WHO and the Chinese Communist Party will really appreciate it. And as always, check out patreon.com slash China Uncensored if you'd like to join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army to support this show. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.